grandfather, Seymour Atlas, was born in Mississippi and became an Orthodox rabbi in Montgomery, Alabama in 1946. He grew up with racial segregation, but became a strong supporter of civil rights when in 1955 he befriended Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King enlisted Grandpa as his personal Hebrew tutor and invited him to speak at the Dexter Avenue Church. Oh, excuse me. I wasn't looking where I was going. Well, you should watch where you're going. Oh, my. You're the Reverend Dr. King, are you not? Well, Hakoba Seder. Hakoba Seder. It's okay. Yeah, I, I'm Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and the Reverend over at the Dexter Avenue Church. Well, it's just a pleasure to meet you, Dr. King. My name is Rabbi Seymour Atlas, and I'm the rabbi over at Agudath Israel Congregation. Wow, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Well, seeing that you're a rabbi, think you can help me with a little Hebrew? Hmm, Hebrew? Hmm, well, of course. It'd be my pleasure, actually. I'd be happy to be maybe like your personal Hebrew tutor. Just let me know when would work for you. You know, at first I didn't know what to make of the bus boycott. Eventually, however, through my conversations with Reverend King and my building friendship and seeing things firsthand, I began to support the Montgomery bus boycott. So in 1956, as a part of Brotherhood Week, I spoke on a panel of religious leaders at a local radio station at the height of the Montgomery bus boycott. That week, 90 civil rights activists were brought into the county court for protesting. Reporters were all over town, and a photographer from Life magazine captured me and Reverend Roy Bennett, an African-American minister, sitting together. When the photograph appeared in the magazine along with an article about the boycott, Many, many members of my congregation became very, very upset. I need to speak with you, Rabbi. As president of Agudath Israel, I must tell you this magazine picture of you with an African-American minister is simply unacceptable. We can't allow Jews to be brought into this conflict, too. We need to stay neutral. We don't want people to start attacking us, too. As president of the congregation, I'm ordering you to send Life magazine a letter demanding that they take down the picture and include a correction stating that you had nothing to do with the boycott. I cannot do that. Now, you know that despite what I feel in my heart, I never have explicitly endorsed the Montgomery bus boycott in public as the rabbi of this synagogue. Soon after my conversation with the president, I decided to go public. I wrote a sermon praying for the participants of the boycott. Before the sermon was published in the newspaper, someone called a member of our synagogue board. I soon received a phone call from one of the board members. Hello, Rabbi Atlas. Shalom, y'all. This is Rabbi Atlas speaking. Listen, you cannot go public with the sermon. It will hurt you and the Jewish community in Montgomery. I understand your concerns, but I need you to understand that this is very important to me. We need to be on the right side of history. We must support the civil rights movement. It's our responsibility as Jews and as Americans. We cannot be hypocrites, standing up for our own rights solely. Seymour, if you go through with this, I must warn you, I don't think things will work out well for your job here at Agudath Israel. The board will find it impossible to keep you as our rabbi. Shouldn't my job be left up to the congregation to decide? This is a board decision to make, not yours. And we will let you know as soon as we make our decision. Well, thank you. Have a good night. Although I protested, the board voted 27 to 1 not to renew my contract. My family left Montgomery at the end of my contract in 1956. Throughout the rest of my career... I continued to serve other Jewish congregations throughout the South. Overall, I am happy with the stand I took, rather than bending to the whims of others. I'm proud of what I did. Throughout this project, I learned a lot about my family history, and it goes to show you that Jews living in small towns can have a big impact. My family is from all over the South, and remains in the South today. My parents met at a Jewish summer camp in Mississippi and even moved here to raise a family.
They instilled a newfound pride in my southern Jewish heritage. And like those ancestors who came before me, like Mordechai Sheftel, Elizabeth Cohen, Jacob Schiff, Rabbi Seymour Atlas, and countless others, it's now our turn to make a lasting impact on communities throughout the South by keeping Jewish life going strong. Shalom, y'all!